Welcome back everybody, it's your boy Matt the Bat here. Today is the 25th anniversary of the Sixth Sense. 1999 was a great year for movies, so if Y2K happened, we would have ended the end of, end of the world, end of the internet, end of whatever, would have been a great year in movies. Still consider the best year in movies still 25 years later. And this is one of those classics. This is the movie that put M. Night Shyamalan on the map. Yeah, he had a movie out before this with Rosie O'Donnell and the uh, kid from Jack Frost. But this is the movie that everyone paid attention to and said, who is M. Night Shyamalan? And it was kind of like the breakout role for Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, he was in Forrest Gump, Little, Little Gump Jr. at the end. But this is really the movie that was the breakout role for Haley Joel Osment. And Bruce Willis, even now, he was, yeah, he had a pulp fiction too, but he was known for action. This is the movie that brought him back to dramas. Um, this is my favorite. Well, I still go back and forth between this and Unbreakable as my favorite M. Night Shyamalan film. Uh, but I would never say this is the movie that to me has the best script that I have ever, I haven't personally read the script, but as a screenplay, is one of the best screenplays I've ever seen on screen. Um, in my history with this movie, I did not see this movie when it first came out in 99. I didn't see this movie until the summer of 2001, or right before the summer of 2001. I still remember being in fifth grade, Miss C. Wright's class, and I remember people talking about, oh, this, I don't know how it got brought up. Someone brought up the sixth sense. So I guess it wasn't summer yet. Almost. I mean, it was springtime. It was in May. And when they, oh, you haven't seen the sixth sense? You know, you haven't seen the movie? I've seen dead people? Like, no. And back then I wasn't a huge horror fan, so I always looked at this movie. I thought it was a horror movie. You know, a kid who sees dead people. I'm not thinking that's going to be a nice, cheering, goody good movie. You know what I mean? That doesn't sound like a happy movie. Um, and I know, and they're like, oh, you got to see it. You, you've been talking about the movie Unbreakable that just came out in November of 2000, and it finally hit video, and I rented that movie, and I loved Unbreakable. They're like, oh, you got to go see, you got to watch The Sixth Sense. The other movie, my M. Night Shyamalan, with Bruce Willis. So, that weekend in May, we, my, my dad and I and sat down on a sun, probably Sunday afternoon and watched The Sixth Sense. And after that, even then, even then, in 2001, I was like, okay. When I'm already starting to, wanting to get into the film industry, I was like, hmm, wanting to learn movies, making movies and all that. And ever since then, I have always been a fan of this movie. I don't think I start out with Bruce Willis. He has a great performance in this movie. I'm pretty sure he was up for an Academy Award for this movie. And he's amazing. He's amazing. Even when you realize the twist in the movie, you go, whoa. The way that Bruce was pulled all those scenes off was great. His, his, man, his chemistry and the building relationship with Haley Joel Osment is great. I mean, Haley Joel Osment, breakout star in this movie, propelled him to Hollywood top uh, child actors. I mean, after this movie, he was getting all kinds of roles. That's why he was cast in AI with Steven Spielberg. 
Um, and he nailed that role too as a robot, a child robot. Um, and he, either he's a man, he can be funny, he can be emotional, he can be serious a lot. He can bring that terror when he does see the dead people that scares him. He just gives an amazing childhood, child performance in this dark, serious, adult, um, complex movie. I think that you gotta, you got you gotta look at the script. The script is genius. I mean, it's not only the script, I mean, the script, when they finally do reveal the twist, and then they go back and show you all those moments, whether it's the scene where Haley Joe Osmond comes home, and you see Bruce Willis sitting down, and Tony Collette, the mom, sitting down, and you think that entire time they were talking about Haley Joe Osmond. But no, she was just waiting for her son to come home, and he just been, he just been sitting there, dead, <laughs> um, and you don't even realize it. Or the scene where he goes to the restaurant, and he thinks he's late for the anniversary, and she is giving his wife is giving him the cold shoulder. You, know, she, you think she's mad at him for him being late? No. She's just celebrating the anniversary of her dead husband, you know, their wedding anniversary. I mean, there are, or this time when he gets out of his car and he sees the guy who's hitting on his wife and he tries to, you know, get his attention and the guy doesn't even move or look. And you think he can, you know, being an asshole and getting in the car and driving away. Like, no, he doesn't see you, Bruce Willis, because you're not really there. Um, and then even at the beginning, the beginning is so when, you know, when, when we jump a year later, and you see little Haley Joel Osment coming out of the house, and he's running away. In our minds, we think, oh, yeah, he's a kid running from a stranger. This adult figure is following this kid. Of course the kid's gonna run away. Who wouldn't? But then after you hear, once you realize the twist, you go back and watch the movie, and you'll get it. The kid is, yes, in one way the kid is running away from the stranger, but the kid is also running away if he sees the dead person, which is Ruth Willis. It's a mindfuck. This whole movie's a mindfuck. And I love, this is the type of movie you can go back and watch it over and over and over and over and over again and find little things throughout that you don't pick up on the first time or the second time or the third time or the fourth time. I've been watching this movie for almost 25 years and guess what? The last time I went to go back and watch this movie to do this review, I just realized that opening when Haley Joe Osmond was running away he wasn't running away because of a stranger, Ruth Willis. He's running away from the dead guy. And we in the audience never figured that out. How you can tell me how many people figure that out? How many? No, no money. No money. Tell me how many people figured out the twist in the middle of the movie? Both twists in the middle. That whole speech with Haley Jordan M. Night Sharon was a fucking genius. And he tried it again with the village, but it didn't work in the village. But here, it does. He gives you two twists at the same time, and you never realize it. The first twist is, yes, Haley Joe Osmond, I see dead people. Nobody thought that was what's wrong with this kid. He sees dead people. No one's gonna think that. Nobody. But then, M. Night Shyamalan said to his buddy, I'm gonna reveal the other twist right now. And nobody's gonna figure that out. I've seen dead people. When they, don't, when they don't realize they're dead, they just walk around like regular people. And how often do you see these people? All the time. Nobody in that moment realized Bruce Willis is dead. Bruce Willis is dead. 
No money. Now, there might have been more. That one little fucker probably figured that out. But nobody else did. He revealed two twists by our main two characters in the middle of the movie. And then M. Night Shyamalan said, let's really mess with people. And now let's wait now at the end of the movie and reveal, really reveal, Bruce Willis is dead. And then that's when you go. Know, it's like um, Sally Field and Miss Doubtfire. The whole time? The whole time? The whole time? And, and, and then Tony Collette, who plays the mom of Haley Joe Osmond, she has a lot of great scenes in the movie. And once again, we have two main characters that have an arc. Haley Joe Osmond, scared of these people, these dead people all the time, finally understands to finally sit down and talk with them and figure out how to help them. That's a good character arc. Bruce Willis finally coming to terms with finally helping somebody with something he wasn't able to do with the last patient, and that patient killed him. And finally letting go and moving on. This movie's only an hour and 40 minutes. It's a great script, a great story. James Newton Howard's score is great. It's not the best in the M. Night Shyamalan films. I still say Unbreakable and The Village. But it's definitely the third best in the, in, in the music department for an M. Night Shyamalan film. I mean, this was M. Night Shyamalan's coming out for you think, hey, but that's why I'm one of those people that like, yes, M. Night Shyamalan has had its ups and downs. Um, but I also say, this is the guy who gave us the Sixth Sense. This is the guy who gave us Unbreakable. This is the guy who gave us Signs. Even to maybe his weaker of the three, of the four, the village, still had a lot of great things in it. The only thing I ever wondered in this movie, which isn't another thing that never dawned on me until now, why didn't the wife of Bruce Willis ever leave that house? Your husband died in that house. The guy who killed your husband committed suicide in that house. And you're still living in that house. You're more fucked up than the guy who, than the kid who can see dead people. Um, but then I realized, I'm sure someone brought that up at some point and then, well, if she moves out of that house, then the whole story falls apart. Then everyone's gonna know Bruce Willis is dead. <laughs> I mean, she goes, Everybody knows. She knows. Everybody knows. So she had to stay in that house. And that's how Bruce was able to come home every day, wearing the same outfit throughout the whole movie, but maybe take off his jacket or take off his shirt, but everything he was wearing the night he died, he's wearing throughout the whole movie, and nobody figured that out. So it's a brilliant script, a brilliant movie, Great, one of my favorite Bruce Willis performance, this and, and Unbreakable are my two favorite Bruce Willis acting jobs. Haley Joe Osmond. I wish Haley Joe Osmond got back in that, this type of acting now as an adult. Uh, he's acting again, but he's not taking on complex dramas like he used to. Um, and like that M. Night Shyamalan has a new movie coming out soon, Trap. Um, in the first week of August with Josh Hartnett. Looking forward to that. So let me know in the comments below, are you a fan of The Sixth Sense? Is this one of your favorite M. Night Shyamalan films? Is it one of your favorite Bruce Willis movies? Can you believe it's 25 years old? They don't make them like, like, they, like people say, they don't make them like they used to. 1999 was a great year in movies. And this is one of the classics of 1999. So have you watched some Sixth Sense in a while? Is your sense tingling? 
Let me know in the comments below. Matt, I'm out of here. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment.